Hey guys and welcome to AK Pearl Films, your source for tech tutorials and more. And on this video I'm going to give you a tutorial about Motion 5 and how you can create a nice intro inside of it. This will be a part 2 from my previous Motion 5 tutorial. Since then I've gotten a lot of positive feedback that you guys are learning about Motion 5 and its capabilities and features, and so I was like, why not create a part 2 to this so you guys can learn some more advanced techniques such as depth of field, 3D cameras, and more. So stick around if you guys would like to see a Motion 5 tutorial about how to create a nice intro for your videos. Alright, so let's dive right into the creation of this Motion 5 intro. So first up, we want to open up Motion 5, and we want to create a new motion project. The settings that I'm going to use today is I'm going to use Broadcast HD 1080, I'm going to use 29.97 frames per second, and a duration of 10 seconds. You can customize this if you want, but these are the settings I'm going to use. So if you want to use them, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. So now, let's just press open. And so right when it opens, we want to go up to this 100% and we want to click on the drop down arrow and press fit to screen. So you can see the whole canvas that we're working at. But I'm just going to zoom out a little bit to around 25% so I can have more of the area so I can drag and drop a background on that. So I'm going to click on the rectangle tool and I'm going to click and drag from the top left to the bottom right. And then I'm going to just click out and go to the rectangle and just open up the HUD. And so inside of the heads up display, we're going to go over to the fill and we want to change the color. I'm just going to click on that and go to the crayons. And I'm going to change it to a nice, let's do, let's do a nice red here, but I'm going to make it darker so it looks a little nicer there. That looks sweet. And if you don't want to use the heads-up display, you can always use a good old inspector. You can go over here to the fill color and change that right over there. But now I have the background all set up, but let's change the name of the group to background. So background. Boom, there we go. And now we have our background nice and ready for us to use. So now let's create the camera. The camera allows us to move it around to get different perspectives, to add the depth of field, and it just makes our scene in 3D space. So let's switch that to 3D. And then let's go over here to the top right and make it into a three screen layout. And this might look a little terrifying at first, but it's just what the camera is seeing. So this is one display, this is another display, this is another display. So let's go over here and change that to perspective. So clicking on here and going to perspective, let's orbit the perspective camera around. We want to zoom out just a little bit until you can see more of our space that we're working with. And let's do the same for this, change that to perspective, orbit the camera around, dolly out a little bit and pan the camera around so we get a nice view of our scene. Might take a little bit of adjusting, but once you get it all ready, it should be ready and working for you. So these two displays are what, the, what you can see so you can manage the 3D scene a little bit easier. But the active camera is what's going to be displayed when we go to share and export a movie. So we can use all three views to just make our lives a little bit easier about how to set up our scene. So now let's click on the text tool, click on the scene, and let's add some text here. So if you have a nice YouTube channel, you can change the text right here to what you want. I'm just going to use mine, which is AK Pro Films. I'm going to change the text here. Let's use, let's use a nice text, but not too thin because that won't fit the style that's what I, I don't know that's my opinion I guess but let's go to add this a nice one let's just yeah okay let's use Bebas my favorite one that's what I use on my YouTube channel as well 
So now let's instead, before we do anything, let's, let's click on the text layer and bring that up into its own little group and rename it that group to text. Text. Boom, there we go. We got that already. And you can see that this is flat right against the background. So let's fix that so we can have this depth of field. So if you're into cinematography or movie making or camera work, you'll know that an object closer is more in focus if you want and the background is blurred. And that's the kind of effect I'm going with. So let's click on this text layer. Let's go over to the properties, position on the Z axis here. We want to bring that up in Z space. So we have some separation between the background there. So now let's click on our text and go back into the size. And let's make it fit so it has a nice size, but it's in the Z axis separated from the background. So if I orbit the camera around, you can see that it has quite a bit of separation from the red background, and that is what we want. So it looks nice on the active camera, and from the perspective view, it has a good separation from the background again. Now let's also go over to the text and click right below our text, or you can go above, or whatever fits your preference. I'm just going to do it to AK Pro Films and do the slogan, which is tech, tutorials, and more. Tutorials and more. Oh. There we go, we have our text ready and waiting. And you can see that I flip between the inspector and the heads-up display. I don't know, it's just what I do, I guess. <laughs> but you can use the heads-up display or the inspector depending on what you want to use. Let's go back over to the properties and the Z scale, bring that up. So it's not right against the background, but it's midway between the text, this text layer right here, and the background. So it's kind of midway in between. Let's try to put that right in the middle. Let's orbit our view around. You can see that it has AK Pro Films in the front, tech tutorials and more in the middle, and the background in the back. And let's move the text so it looks nice on our active camera. So there we go, we have the basics of this title set up, but now we need to configure the depth of field. We need to move our camera around in the scene so we can get that nice depth of field and some parallaxing effect. And we just need to do some animation so it looks pretty nice and has a nice flow to the intro so we can use it in our projects. So the next step is going to add the depth of field to the camera. All right, so now it's time to configure the depth of field on this intro to add some nice depth in between the text and the background layers. So we have everything set in ZSpace according to the depth of field that we'll set up in just a few moments. So let's set the depth of field up. So let's go over to the camera, click on that, click on camera, and press show. They'll show all the depth of field preferences that we will configure. And then we want to go over to the render settings and we want to go and click on depth of field and make sure that is checked so we can see that happen in the active camera. And I think I turned that off by accident. Just make sure that is checked and then you won't have any problems with seeing the depth of field being applied. Also go to the beginning of your timeline and you are ready to create the depth of field. So then we want to go to the depth of field blur amount and go and set that to around 75. You can configure this as you would like, but I'm just gonna go 75. If you wanna change it, go ahead. For focus offset, we want to change that. So let's bring the focus offset right behind the first text object, AK Pro Films. So the focus offset, you want that right behind your first text object, and you want the near focus to be right in front of the first text object. So anything inside of this rectangle will be in focus. And anything outside of that will be blurred, and that is the effect that we want to create. So then we want to go to around three seconds. We want to add a keyframe for the position, and we want to go to the beginning and add a keyframe, and then we can animate the camera so we can get some movement before we do anything more with the depth of field. So I'm just going to move it on the x-axis just a little bit. I'm going to go on the z-axis and bring that down just a little bit. 
and the oop, that was a y-axis excuse me in the z-axis we want to bring that forward just a little bit but make sure the text is still in that rectangle so as you can see we just added a little bit of movement into our scene there and also while you're previewing your footage make sure you're clicking on the active camera so you can see that happen in real time because if you're clicking on one of the perspective views you won't see anything happen you'll be like why isn't it working but just make sure that you are clicking on the active camera to see the elements elements change that you animated so now what you want to do is you want to go to around four seconds so we have a one second interval you can change that if you want to as well make sure you're clicking on the camera add a keyframe for the position we want to go on the z-axis bring that up don't worry about the focus we'll configure that in a second you want to bring that up on the z-axis just a little bit and on the y-axis bring that down and on the x-axis we want to bring that so it's more in the center there and so go back to the three second mark and uh, add a keyframe for the depth of field focus offset add a keyframe right there then at four seconds add a keyframe there as well and then make sure that your text is inside of that little rectangle if you want to you can use the perspective view and you can just make sure that you are positioning it correctly so for the focus offset make sure that your text is in the middle of this little rectangle here so now if we play it back by clicking on the active camera view we can preview it and see what's happening so that looks really cool so now let's go back to the four second mark and let's go to the camera we want to go to the properties we have a keyframe set up we want to go to the seven second mark add another keyframe I want to add just a little bit more movement to that as well so bring that down on the y-axis bring that over a little bit on the x-axis and on the z-axis bring that forward just a little bit so it zooms in just a little bit but you can see that's getting out of that rectangle so we want to go to the we want to go to the focus offset add a keyframe and change that accordingly so now let's go back here and see how that is working so you can see that the text is staying in the middle there which is what we want so from three to four it goes like that and then for that for those three seconds it is moving around shifting in perspective to add that little movement and parallaxing so let's go back to the beginning of our timeline make sure we're on the active camera view and we want to play it back to see what we have so it moves over a little bit it zooms in it just moves around just like that and at seven seconds where it stops we have a keyframe already there for the uh, for the position and then for eight seconds uh, we can go let's add another keyframe there and let's go on the z-axis and zoom it in until we get everything faded out so you can see that we are like that until seven seconds and then at seven seconds to eight seconds we zoom in so it looks really cool you can always make that longer if you choose to do that so let's just see if that's long enough for that zoom in it might seem a little fast so let's edit that keyframe by uh, deleting that keyframe and going to the nine second mark add a keyframe and then on the z-axis zoom in a lot so you get that zooming in effect and then let's go to the rectangle which is our background add a keyframe for the opacity and then go to the end there and we want to add another keyframe so we have it fade out nicely so now let's go to the beginning make sure we're on the active camera I say that a lot because I don't know any of you freaking out when you're like it's not playing in back nothing's working so make sure you're clicking on that active camera little box up here so now let's watch it back to see what it looks like zooms in has that little nice zooming effect and then it zooms in like that in the background fades 
So that is a pretty cool intro, I'd say, that you can use on your YouTube intros for your videos or anything like that if you're working on projects for clients. All right, so now to render this project out, we want to go to Share, and we want to press on Export Movie. You also have other options, such as sharing to YouTube, Facebook, Vimeo, CNN iReport, or send it as an email to your friends, or any of these other options down here. I'm just going to press on Export Movie, and then I'm going to just make sure everything looks sweet. There it is. You can also check all these options down here, make sure the render settings are as you would like. And then when you are done and satisfied with the options, press next and save it wherever you would like. I'm just going to save it to the desktop and name it intro for YouTube. Intro for YouTube, press save. And you'll see the progress bar is telling you how much time you have left before your project is successfully rendered. So it is done and it pulled it up in QuickTime and we can see our project and all the work we put into that. So you can see the depth of field, the movement, and the zoom in, and the fade out. Everything looks sweet. So there you go, you just created your intro inside of Motion 5 using some more advanced techniques such as depth of field and camera movements in 3D. So if you guys enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to give it a like. And make sure to subscribe because I'll have more of these coming out and more tutorials, Mac tips coming soon. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure to check out my website, akprofilms.weebly.com. Let me know if you have any questions at all because I'll feel free to help you out with that. Hope you learned a lot in this video. Comment, rate, and subscribe. And I'll see you in my next video. Have a great rest of your day.